starts carbon scoring. We should do that. Yeah. We should probably go. Sure. And uh, hi guys, how you doing? Kit's here. Hi everybody. Hi Ken. Hey guys, how goes it? I'm Andy. We're gonna talk some Star War. We love it. Uh, and Ken posed a question that derailed my entire plans for this week <laughs> because we ended up having a side chat about lots of stuff about uh, old school 90s dark horse comics but we started with that ken and i want you to repose the question because you said yeah so yeah i had gotten this from a, another podcast i was listening to fake doctors real friends a scrubs podcast and one of the hosts, Donald Faison, is a big Star Wars fan. And he's even he's actually a pilot in the Star Wars Resistance cartoon series. Oh, who's his character in Resistance? Uh, Hype Faison. And so Donald he's a... Donald Faison's character yeah. is Hype Faison? Yeah, and he is a Rodian, um, a la... Uh, God, what's Greedo. it now? I'm draw, no, thank you. I don't know why I'm losing it already. Or, you know, um, all those and, Rodians in the Clone Wars yeah, series that nobody those, knows the names of. <laughs> well the one the one that's, there's also one that's coming to my head from rebels but i digress so he and the mo uh i want to say monique they're one of their sound um sound editors and then another another person was we're talking about the if you had to pick a squadron of four pilots who would you fly with who would you want to be in your squadron and i think, I think it kind of like ties into the the upcoming star wars squadrons game and they were talking like, okay, who who would you have? And they're like, oh, I'd have Anakin, and I'd have this person. And I'm like, I thought about who would I want on my squadron. So I just did up a little post, and I just th threw four pilots in there that I think would work well as a team and be a, a like a seasoned, you know, if I, to get stuff done. They would be good. So I put up my four. Um, my squadron leader, if I'm just, just going to jump yeah, into go it. go for it. Cool. So my squadron leader is Harrison Dula. Uh, so as I said, uh, born leader cares for her crew like she's she's there to get the job done but she's also making sure everyone gets home safe as much as she can and that's and and she knows how to delegate command and say okay we need someone covering this flank like she's good in that regard uh next up would be jarek yeager uh veteran pilot of the of the rebellion uh skilled mechanic he is also in star wars resistance he's one of the deck uh the deck hands who like fixes all the ships gets them up and running and he's also like he's shown in, in multiple episodes where he is also a skilled pilot uh, and still in racing and also knowing when to hold back and when to stay like stay in the shadows when he needs to. Is it Yeager um, in the show? Did it's uh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Because his name is spelled like Chuck Yeager's name, which is like maybe it's maybe it's Yeager. Pilot. It's been a little while since I've watched Resistance, and I only got through the first season, so that could definitely be on kind me. of about what happened to me with Resistance. I was hoping to like branch into all of star wars and i got to resistance and i was like nah this isn't for me yeah and it's like it's definitely like it's with all the previous shows all you know all two of them you you have this time of like okay it's starting out as a kid's show it feels like and then they grow into who they are and what that show's gonna be they're like oh no we can be a little more adult we can push a little more and we can keep going with it and find our place and both times they did that this one never quite hits that stride and kind of stays in that kid show valley of just like it's just fun little adventures like we're gonna go save a little tauntaun to be fair know. they need one of those because all those other shows do the thing like well it's been four years we could probably just start killing people yeah but i mean then then you with though to to that to that um credit if you have those young uh watchers with you they're growing up too they're now four years older than when they first started so if they started eight now they're 12 and they're they can handle a little bit, you know, st stronger yeah. stuff. So uh, moving on, I got my next two. I've got Juno Eclipse from Star Wars The Force Unleashed. She is a pilot for the for the the Secret Apprentice. Um, and she is she's flying him around on his black ops missions, essentially for Vader and the Empire. And then over over, I mean, spoilers for the game over time, they start to see like what their role is in the in the galaxy, what they what it means to do these missions and what it means to be a Jedi for Galen Merrick, the, the Sith Apprentice. But then her role too is like she she sees her last mission before this, she's kind of seen like, I don't like destroying planets. I don't like being the bad guy, essentially. 
and she starts to see like, okay, maybe this new mission, this new, my new duty, my new, um, I'm trying to think of the term when you get, uh, assignment, assignment. Thank you. Your new, her new orders were, okay, I'll be doing something directly, just helping. I'm not going to be this kind of, uh, just this, this like, okay, we just do bombing runs on inhabited villages. She's like, oh no, I'm going to have a different role. And she sees the dark, the darker side of the empire. And eventually together, they also, they fall out of the empire and they as, end up starting the rebellion um, in that storyline. There's a lot of and weird so, uh, connections with like, I guess Force Unleashed is now the EU, but like how many different people started the rebellion kind of thing? Yeah. You know, it's a lot of stories they, they like to go back to like, okay, well, well, they how started the rebellion. Start? Yeah. But you've got, let's see, you've got in Solo, they started the rebellion you got in Rebels that they started the rebellion, and that also in the same show that uh, Ahsoka started the rebellion, and then Force Unleashed. I assume this new uh, Star Wars series that is they're working on with uh, with um, Kenobi. Kenobi, yeah, we'll probably have it, and then the game that we just talked about, like a bunch. That I can't remember the name of because it's the middle of the night. I think it's well squadrons, but it's actually set. Squadrons is set after, after Return of the Jedi. Because they're they're taking down the remnants of the of the, empire imperial fleet. Um, and it's so, called the Rebel Alliance. But fall, yeah. Fallen Order even Alliance of Rebels. Fallen Order even has the implication that they're going to start a, a rebellion. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's part of it too. Is that you learn that you don't just like no one necessarily. In a lot of these settings, they didn't necessarily start the rebellion. They came together to form the rebellion all together. Like yeah. the rebellion was in us all along. It it'd was the cool. friends we made along the way. It'd be really cool if somebody was able to tie all these strings together. Maybe that's a John Favreau job. I, you know, let's. Uh, someone was talking one time about like, oh, let's give him like all of this. Like, how about we just let him make one awesome, one or two awesome things, and don't try and water it down so that it's like, oh, look how great he made everything. Sure, like, sure. Can he? Like, let's. Not everyone can be Kevin Feige, and even Kevin Feige can only do, you know, star the Marvel stuff for so long. So it's like let's keep him because there was a while where fans were like let 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 Feige take over Star Wars. It's like then yeah, you're just gonna leave Marvel over yeah, here. What like do you do with that? Yeah, I mean i I like the idea of having a a good hand behind the on the wheel, but you can only handle so many so many wheels. Like you only you know keep so many plates spinning. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I thought did, don't I remember that he is. Is that how you pronounce his name, Feige? I, I've always wondered that. Okay, uh, uh, isn't he working on Star Wars now? I thought I heard a story that he was working on, like not that he was running it, but that he was working on a Star Wars thing. Star Wars stuff now. Yeah, cool. There was some talk Same that he company. was going to get a project, but I don't remember if it ever came into anything solid aside from like, oh yeah, okay. he's working. He he might work on a project because he had you know he's he's Kevin Feige. Yeah. So. I mean, give and then good people, the, good projects, you know. Yeah, and then the last um, pilot on my on my list is Thane Kyrell. He's from the the Star Wars novel Lost Stars. It's a very much kind of like side story to the original trilogy. It follows these two pilots, uh, Thane Kyrell and oh god, I'm forgetting her name. I'm gonna forget it and I'll just I'll keep moving. Anyways, it follows them as they start out as just young kids on a planet, and both of them want to learn to fly. And then as they go along, they become, they join the, they join the academy. They, they rise up in the ranks. One of them ends up falling away and they they both find their own stories as it weaves in and out of the original trilogy. Like it starts just before essentially new hope would start. And then as, or it, I guess it starts before then, cause it's a flash. It's a, it starts out as with them as kids and then it moves forward. And by the end of it, they're at a point in the storyline where like, Oh, okay. They've, They've gone through the entire story. It's kind of like a, um, I would say kind of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, but less like, oh, hey, we keep weaving in and out. Less, less they stay a little more bink. on the perimeter. Yeah. Tag and Bink are far more formative and they in, far more instrumental in the Are they still trilogy. canon? No. Aww. They're awesome, but no. Dang. So yeah, that was, and every one of mine was, is, is a, is a great pilot in their own right. And all of them know how to work as a team, which is one thing that I focused on was because originally some people were saying like, oh, well, the, Anakin's the best pilot. I'm like, yeah, but he's going to, if he, he's just going to leave the other three to get killed and not care. So it's like, I kind of want everyone to work together as a team. So that, that was my idea for my, my, my squadron. 
I think Kit so. should do his squadron because we're going to have a lot of similarities. And I didn't have the EU knowledge that Ken had to pull half these names. <laughs> okay. Um, right before I get started, I do want to uh, also put in a plug for Lost Stars. It is a terrific book. Um, I really Silver. enjoyed it. It's it's aimed at uh, it's a young adult novel, but it is a fantastic book. I really Lost enjoyed Stars. it. Yeah. Is it is it Very canon good. still or is it not canon? Yes. It's part of the new canon. Yeah. It's yeah. part of the it's new part of canon. Disney. Yeah. All right. Lost Stars. I've written it down. I'm going to read it because this is the point of this podcast is like I've fallen out of this fandom too hard. And my experience with Clone Wars is kind of like, okay, yeah, there's good stuff to find here. And that's okay. So we'll report back. <laughs> if I can interject real quick before he nope, jumps in too. Mm-mm. Okay, fair, fair enough. No, <laughs> if you sign up for Audible, um, no. they do a re- okay, the Star Wars audi- audiobooks. Not... No, we're not sponsored? Okay. The Star Wars audiobooks are really good. They do a lot of good uh, sound mixing on it. They bring in music. They bring in sound effects. It's very engaging. Depending on how... If you can, I definitely recommend reading if you do, if that's still your jam. But if you're more active in doing things and you listen to audiobooks... The audiobooks for Star Wars and Lost Stars is very good. Can I go on a tangent? Because that's what yeah. we do on We Were Gamers podcasts. Um, I mean, we're a subpod <laughs> of We Were Gamers <laughs> at WeWereGamers.com. Have... <laughs> yes, thank you. Podcast at WeWereGamers.com. Uh, have you guys listened to any of those Wolverine Marvel podcasts? Yeah. Mm. Thoughts on the sound mixing on those, Ken? It, I'm, it's, it's already gone out of my head. Okay. It was a bit, it is kind of that forgettable, isn't it? Yeah. And I listened to the first one as a, I want to say as a completed project, like after it, after it had wrapped, because initially it was like, oh yeah, get it it episode by episode only. And then it came to regular podcasts later as a completed thing. So you could binge it. Yeah. And it's, it's fine. It's more, it's kind of, I don't know. Parts of it, I, I mean, as far as the sound, it was fine. Is it there? It's it's weird though because they try and play it almost like a radio show at times because yes. it's very much like it's like oh you just hear running in the middle of in the middle of the the yeah. forest and you're like okay very much a radio like, drama yeah it's and it wasn't what I was expecting okay. that's part of it too is so Kit needs to give us a squadron we we delayed it too much yeah sorry go right ahead <laughs> no 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 it's good we have the same opinion so it's just like eh yeah. That guy. All right, Kit. Okay. He's right uh, there so, on my screen, so I'm pointing at him. <laughs> so for my squadron, uh, I also chose Hera Syndulla as my as my leader um, for all of the reasons that Ken stated. Also, I like it when she gets mad and she slips into a French-sounding Twi'lek accent. Is it French cause... or Creole? I can never tell which it's trying to be. It's supposed to be the French Resistance, right? Yeah, I think the Twi'leks yeah. and their story are supposed to be the French Resistance okay. during... Got World it. War II. All right. But all of the other reasons that Ken already went through for why you would have Hera in your in your squadron and leading it are the honest, same reasons why I picked her. Honest review of Hera Syndulla, one of the reasons to watch Rebels is getting to watch yeah. her story arc, especially as Kanan kind of, and she'd sep- separate, come back together, and then what ends up happening at the end. It's very interesting to watch Hera become not the character you thought she was. Yeah. Um, also, I picked uh, Wedge Antilles, um, two veteran thumbs. of two Death Stars, uh, instrumental in blowing up the second one, blew up the North Tower. Uh, also started Rogue Squadron. So and Wraith um, Squadron. And, yes. Um, He's also at the the Battle of Redaxis, or whatever the name of that last planet is in the rise of Skywalker. I think he's also responsible for, uh, taking it out in at AT on Hoth. One of the only people. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, Luke took one down when he didn't even need to know. Yeah. Peter, but Luke but... crashed his ship and killed his co-pilot. So <laughs> yeah. I'll ride with wedge. Is Luke responsible for his co-pilot? I mean, I mean, if, if, well, here's the thing. Do we know his co-pilot was dead? Cause if he wasn't, he was, yeah. Dak dies, Fair like enough. literally enough, dies yeah. and then gets stepped on. What if he was just like that? They, the uh, deleted scene was just like, oh, Luke, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has left Hoth. He's alone on the planet. He's eating tauntauns for years. The Snowspeeder crumple zones are really great. Yeah, they're yeah. Re- a five star IAHS 
safety <laughs> pick. Motor Trends <laughs> Snow Speeder of the Year. <laughs> Plus, when I was uh, since I since I was a kid, I always thought that the part in A New Hope when Luke has the Tie Fighter on him and he, he needs somebody to help him out, and Wedge kills it by basically flying right at Luke, and Luke dodges to the side and he shoots the Tie Fighter and flies through it. And I, I love that part. I have two it's Black awesome Series movie. figures of pilots. One is Luke, and the other is Wedge, because okay. you can't Wedge, Wedge, yeah. Wedge man. Yep. Uh, I also picked uh, Poe Dameron, the man who shot down 11 TIE Fighters in like seven seconds. Uh, bit of a hothead, but Hera can keep him in line, I am sure. Uh, he is not my leader, but... No way. He can fly He not can with, fly an X-Wing not, like nobody's been. Not with a LAS cannon. Yeah. Yeah. But and then, he, yeah, if Hera's there, she can keep him in line. Like, yeah. she kept Kanan in line. So you, that's, guys are, you, you guys know. are... I applaud your optimism. <laughs> <laughs> and uh my last pick i picked corin horn uh who as far as i know is only in the rogue squadron books and the video games he has his own uh, book. i don't think he's ever shown up anywhere else i don't think he was in the final battle in uh rise of skywalker he might have been i don't know but he has his own book too oh yeah the, uh, and yeah he was in i jedi too I jedi. yeah but uh, yeah, uh, one of the key members of Rogue Squadron, which uh, was a book, video game, and comic book series that I dearly loved in the late '90s and early 2000s. So uh, he gets. Uh, it wasn't enough for me to have Wedge in there. I had to get another uh, pure Rogue Squadron person in there yeah. as well. I end up kicking Poe Dameron out of your list and replacing her uh, him with Tycho Chelu from Rogue Squadron, also. But I think your list is really good. I can't. It's interesting to me that off the back, off the top of my head, none of us. I mean, the only Jedi you would think of really would be Anakin, and none of us picked him. And no one grabbed another Jedi. Like you'd think a Jedi would make a good pilot, and yet all the good pilots are always not Jedi. I mean, you both picked Corn Horn, isn't he? Doesn't he end up being a Jedi? Uh, I think if you pick Corrin Horn because he's a Jedi, he can't be in your squadron. Because by the time he becomes a Jedi, he's no longer part of the squadron. He's moved on to fighting with uh, Isard and all those people in the, her, in the, like, the subplot of all that series. And 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 he becomes like a full-on Jedi with Myrix and goes across the galaxy and does stuff. And so... like. I'd have to pick Corrin pre like he has great reflexes because he ends up being force sensitive, but I don't know if, if I was going to pick based on how they end up, then I'd probably kick him out of the squadron. He's got too much stuff going on. Well, that's kind of how um, Luke was too. Like he was a great pilot. And then once he started doing Jedi training, then we don't really see him in any, like he doesn't fight in the second death star. Basically, once he starts training with Yoda, he's done being a fighter pilot. That's true, yeah, and that yeah, yeah, and that's that also too. Like with the like, Luke would have been probably the mo the closest one to me choosing a Jedi to be the pilot, and then, then he's he's definitely a good pilot and stuff. Just and he's he doesn't, but he's not like that's not his focus. Like he it's he has so much other stuff in his head. I would think in a battle, like to be like, oh yeah, that's X, Y, and Z. Whereas like. Everyone else on my list is like, oh, no, they can think about just the battle and maintaining it and getting through. Whereas, like, Luke's also thinking about, oh, well, I've got to stop Vader, you know? Yeah. There's so many there's so many stories in the, like, in the comics and stuff as they go on of, like, him, like, like there's a comic called Vader Down where he essentially tries to take down Vader himself. And it's, like, in the middle of a battle, it's like, no, you're endangering others by putting yourself out there. You, like, there's more things you have to keep in mind than just this. And... Yeah. Everyone on my everyone on my list was very much like, oh, they are part of a unit. They are working together. And Whereas with yeah, I liked the, your idea with what's her name, Joan J Juno Eclipse. Mm -hmm. So I, I that's where I grabbed Tycho from is because he was also one of those uh, Tie Fighter pilots that's like, no, nah, I'm not about this like massacring people kind of thing. So, um, uh, Kit mentioned it. I think. We we got Tycho and we've got 
Corrin and we've got Wedge, and they don't become famous. I mean, they have a, like a following based on the movies, but I don't think they become famous until you join the, the limited number of people that went to the comic book store every week in the 90s to grab Rogue Squadron covers. I still remember the one that grabbed me, Kit. I don't know if you remember this cover. The, the cover that I was like, I am reading whatever that is, was an ATST pointed at the sky with an X-wing in front of it flying towards the to the reader with like las bolts shooting at this X-wing and it was just said rogue squadron across the top of it I was like what is that and that was my introduction to the 90s dark horse run of comics including the rest of it which I ended up getting into after that but like there was a huge run there I don't know None of it is canon anymore, but I don't really know how popular it was. Does any, do you, either of you have a gauge of like how many people really sat on these comics and loved them as much as we did? It's interesting because for a while they're like, they were, they're a constant seller at the shop. Um, like there's always be like people looking for star Wars comics during, even when they were like, Oh, they moved on to the Clone Wars era and people and like it's all still Dark Horse. People still come in for some like, oh, I'm trying to fill in holes in my collection. Well, Star Wars I comics issues. are not unique to Dark Horse. I mean, Marvel started Star Wars comics in the 70s right after the yeah the movies came out. So, I mean, as much as it started in the 70s, they've been in, in as constant production across multiple companies as a spider-man or a batman or all these types of things you could always find a star wars comic on the shelves as far as i know i mean there was no there was there a was seamless, a gap there was a gap okay yeah in between the end of marvel and dark horse picking it up i want to say it was like a four year gap or something like that between uh like it was like the late 80s when marvel stopped and then it was like the early 90s around the time that they that they started up heir to the empire is when they started up I, I think Dark Empire was the first Dark Horse comic that uh, Star Wars Dark Horse comic, and I think that was like ninety two or something like that. So, Sounds but I think it was right. I think it was like a, about a, like a four year gap or something like that. Yeah, and and part of that too is like they because they crossed over with some of those a lot of those characters because at the time the Lucas Story Group was trying to maintain an idea of continuity. There was there were fans of like just the novels and they would because they were the same characters, they would carry over. And there's a lot more like there's a lot more um, connectivity there. And so it's like cross promotion. So it's like people like, oh, well, they're like, oh, have you read Dark Empire? Yeah, I have. I have the comics. It's like, no, no, it's a novel, too. It's like all that stuff, like kept people kind of feeding back and forth. And the, there was definitely some other stories that, that didn't quite hit, like a lot, some of the droids comics are oh. hit and miss. And uh. well, I mean, for some kids, for some people, that's that's their jam. And some I, I don't really you know. like the ones where C-3PO is rocking around with like I, I've seen a lot of posters for the C-3PO with like 7000 guns on him. We come when he becomes a bounty hunter. I don't know if you remember that one, Kit. <laughs> <laughs> I have I might even have that one. Hold on. I, should I go look for it? It's probably back. There. <laughs> I don't know. Have you. So one of the things I've done, I've kept a lot of my Star Wars comics from them, but I really love reading them. I've actually grabbed a lot of those collections and it's hard for me to like spend extra money these days. Um, it's hard to justify. I got to buy you know, a new car. I've got to buy, I got to think about college tuition and all these types of things. But like those books are so eminently readable in that era. I feel like, I feel like the seventies Marvel and we can do a different pod on like the seventies Marvel and we can do a different pod on the new Marvel they follow so closely to the storyline of, of star Wars that, yeah, you get a lot of stuff in the in-between time, but like an example of dark horse, they did something called the early adventures, right? Where it kind of like slots into some missing time. And it was the first time for me, I didn't read a lot of novels at that point. It was the first time for me that I realized that there were gaps in star Wars that could be filled in, in eminently visual way and satisfy and like completely rereadable. Cause there's only like, I think the longest one I can think of would be, uh, not the early adventures. There's another side story. The maybe might just be adventures or whatever. It's like a hundred issues long, 
but they're all rereadable in a sense that the others might not be as much because they're so contained inside their time periods of what the stories are they're telling. Although that might just be kind of Rogue Squadron and the main trilogy. And then when we talk about some of the earlier stuff, it might not be as true about how contained they kept themselves. But, um, well, I think they did in a lot of ways. Like, like I think of either, like there's times where they're like, okay, let's focus on, like they they had their in the and I think the kind of the peak of it they had like okay we had a rebellion story running we had a clone war story running we had a dark times story running it was like and a knights of the old republic story running like all four yeah. at the same time to the point that there was a storyline called vector that ran a story between all four series <laughs> even though so it's like I they were both like you didn't necessarily need to read the other parts to get it but it's like that dark the the dark time still reads really well as a very self-contained story. Like this is them during the dark times. And you can also read the Knights of the Republic stuff. And really it just, it's its own story. Like it, it, it makes references to the game, but it's really just its own story. It's its own adventure. And that was what was really great about the dark horse stuff for a while is that they, they knew to keep things kind of like, not to say stay in their lane. Cause I don't like bottled. the term, but yeah. They keep it both bottled. Yeah, they keep it like, okay, cool. That's this is the story. You don't have to worry about other continuity because it's like this is thousands of years before that. It's not going to be an issue. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe we start with Rogue Squadron for a second here, mm -hmm. because that might be the one that's most tangentially or tendrils have the most connections to Star Wars proper and also like books and other stuff. I felt like it knew exactly what it wanted to do. It created characters in the comics that ended up in the books and books characters ended up in the comics and they did it so seamlessly to me that I never knew because I started with the comic. Like I said, that cover grabbed me off the shelf. I read these characters. And I was like, who's this Tycho Chelu guy? This guy's amazing. Why is he in any of the, the shows and then i'm like yeah wedge is really awesome and then uh that gets me to the books and then you read the books and you're like well wedge is obviously cooler than all of these people because he's keeping in line the insanity of this but i don't know i don't know if those books would hold those books would hold the books would hold up without the comics but would the comics have held up without the books do you think kit uh yeah absolutely yeah. um i think that I think that if you, I think it's it's great to read both, but I think you can read if you if you just read if you if comics aren't your thing and you just want to read the novels, I think you can read the the Rogue Squadron novels. And if if uh, novels aren't your thing and you prefer comics, I think you can just read the comics, and both are uh, absolutely stand on their own. Yeah. I don't, was there a standout story for you in the Rogue Squadron era? It doesn't have to be the comics, but like, or a cover or something that just, I, I know, Ken, you probably joined Dark Horse a little later than we did on, on the Star Wars front. Yeah, I, I was over on the, uh, there's, yeah, the, I was definitely not, I didn't jump into the X-Wing Squadron in that era. Yeah. I came in later or I was with other comics and stuff, but yeah. Yeah. I liked the the comics, um, but I always I always preferred the I always thought that the no, the novels, especially the first four novels, um, were always really terrific. Um, and I I I really liked, um, um, Iceheart, oh, and I liked yeah. her whole yeah. thing about about uh um uh uh the the deal with her dad being in the ISB and then her sort of taking over after after the Emperor was was killed and well, she was just, like the emperor's consort or something. Yeah. And just how, how, I don't know it, that to me, she always felt like a, uh, kind of like, a um, uh, stereotypical, like, like, uh, if you saw in a James Bond movie, like oh, a KG, yeah. like if some, if a KGB person took over the, yeah. the Soviet union in, in, you know, 1972 or something and, uh, and, or, you know, right after Stalin died or something. And, and, uh, uh, I always thought that that was that 
and her becoming the main bad uh, villain of the of the the books. I always thought that she was a terrific um, character, and I, I always kind of feel like, and and I'm not trying to take anything away from Thrawn. I think Thrawn's a great villain. Going to mention but, this. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I always feel like like she doesn't get the credit and she doesn't get the appreciation that she deserves because she yeah. gets nowhere near the amount of attention no. that Thrawn gets. But no. she's a fantastic villain. If she had had another book, like a prequel book or something, she might have. Uh, she might have grabbed more attention from other people. And I think she totally would have deserved a prequel book. It might have been a little bit on the like you said, the KGB side of things where you're like, yeah, I kind of get where this is going and like it suffers from being a prequel. And so there's not really much interesting about it, but it was, in- it was fascinating to me that Stackpole, the guy that wrote all those novels to, to go back to the novels. Uh, he has carte blanche. Any franchise that hires that guy is just like, whatever you want to do, go for it, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and he chose to create her, Instead of bringing in Thrawn, instead of making her allied with Thrawn, which he could have done because Thrawn obviously survives, you know, the initial Empire's fall and all that sort of stuff. At least in the old EU, I don't know where he stands these days. Uh, Maybe Ken could fill us in in a second because he's shaking his hand like he knows. Oh, okay. Uh so there's just there's a lot of uh, speculation. Okay, as so to we where don't know yet where going. Thrawn is at in the current. Ex- uh, what it's not Disney. We know exactly where he is. He's in the he's in the tentacle of a space whale. That's true. Good point. Yeah, he's alive, obviously, in the tentacle of a space whale. Somewhere where Ezra is, also apparently, maybe. So Hopefully. he and Thrawn are having some sort of eternal battle to the end. Is that we've what we've discovered on this podcast? It should be a short battle. I think Ezra still has his lightsaber. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe they're trying to get back, and it's like a buddy film. Ooh. It's, it's, you know, Thrawn and Ezra <laughs> on the road again. Okay. It's, it's like, like it's like Zeb and Callus, but but much, much longer and much further away. I just, I was thinking it was like, you know, like a little bit of like due date or something. It's sort of a comedy series where uh, Ezra keeps having to save Thrawn because he doesn't have force powers. <laughs> that your reference is due date and not like planes trains and automobiles like that's i'm very much dating myself with that reference but like um the the two different stories you know sorry. planes trains and automobiles is good but i don't want anybody to be the john candy of my ezra thrawn movie because at a certain point in that movie john candy is almost hateable you can't hate him because he's john candy but if like if it wasn't john candy you'd be like i don't like this anymore this is like funny. if it was Louis Anderson, you'd be like, no, oh, no, I done. wouldn't watch that movie if it was Louis Anderson. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. Oh. yeah, you found the perfect. We don't want any Louis Andersons in our Thrawn is what we're saying here. We still like Louis. He's fine. Louis for Anderson all his has, own... <laughs> has a great dynamic for exactly what he gets hired for. What Love the hell are we talking about? <laughs> X-Wing pilots. Oh, somehow, uh, oh uh, no, it's Thrawn interesting to me that, that he creates Izard instead of um, using Thrawn or engaging her with Thrawn. He says, you know, like most of the Empire actually follows this woman, you know, because she is who she is and, and they create a good. But it, it's cool that like those books are it, there's 12 of them, I think, maybe 13. Uh, and they're long and they have a lot of story and canon inside of themselves what i really liked when i was a younger man (laughs) reading the uh the comics about that was they were all especially for rogue squadron they were all four issue blocks so if you grabbed four i mean you could you get more out of if you read the four before and the four after but it was like here's the mission to this planet to destroy this imperial garrison etc so I think that's where you begin to like a lot of those pilots that don't get any name recognition or anything else like that. And, and it's, it's a really good entry point, I think for having gone into after that, 
some Dark Horse series that maybe weren't as friendly to the to the uh, lay reader. Like maybe if you picked up the fourth XR Coon series, you didn't know what you were reading. Uh, I'm not a huge canon knower. I don't know what the right word is for that. Canophile. I guess it also depends on yeah, because there's so many different eras of canon now that it's hard to. I like XR Kun, but I I get all the tales from the Jedi jumbled up in my head. Is what I'm saying. I, it's hard not to when you have that many comics just in general. Like even because you have you'll have even the the original Marvel stuff, the Dark Horse stuff, the new Marvel. Like it all it bleeds together at times, so it's understandable. Plus, that's just talking about comics, not even about the novels, and then the the tie-in video games. Like it's. It's understandable that stuff just kind of becomes a gel of like Star Wars in your head. Yeah. But and the, the XR Kun ones were set like a generation or something before. Oh, way before. Um, yeah. K and uh, uh, what's the other brother? The Keldromas and oh, everybody, the Keldromas! Right? Oh my God! It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What is his name? U- U- Ulrich? No, 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 no. I'm thinking of Frieden Nad. Yeah. Oh, Frieden and Nad. Fried and Nad. Fried and Nad's the one who's like, who's like Fried dead and Nad by the time is they way get before there, right? XR Kun, isn't yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, I would, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's who I was thinking of. Yeah, I was thinking of Frieden wanna... Nad, not XR Kun. It's funny because like the XR Kun is one of the one of the the things I always meant to get into and like research because I always heard there's such good stories. I just never got into them. Like it's not that I. I'm sorry. I just never got to them because. Comics. There's not there's not really that many tales of the Jedi. I want to say that there's probably like twenty or thirty total issues. It was like it was like a handful of like six issue miniseries and a couple of shorter ones. There were like a couple of two parter little ones, but it, it's not it's not like it's not like you're looking at two hundred issues or anything. Yeah, it was more just like I couldn't find the sets, and I'm always like, like I can't read. Oh yeah, them. they're they're yeah. pricey now. If you're if you're looking for them now, uh, if e- either get trades or um, just get the digitals because it's like they are pricey issues now to to try and find the original issues. We even got some gold gold label ones at the shop and put them up on the wall because they were those. But that yeah. was my biggest kind of like hindrance in reading those stories was yeah. Just that, oh, they're not necessarily like, oh, because I'd look in our bins and we we do some buys and stuff finally, but like we just wouldn't come up with full sets. Hearing like like Wikipedia gave me a good rundown of stuff, but I never got a, a gen- I never got to read the books because I couldn't find full sets to read. Yeah. Even even the trades, I don't know if they still are, but even for a while the trades were really pricey. There and and so like they you, like went out of print. If you yeah. go to Comic Con or WonderCon or whatever, all those like fifty percent off trade booths. They have some of these Dark Horse things, but Tales from the Jedi and a couple others are just like impossible to find good copies, full copies of the, that series. And it's long. It is a long it's, series of comics. And it's... I don't think Tales is that long. Isn't it like 20, 30 issues total? Tales from the Jedi? Yeah. Um. I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, isn't it like, I don't know, four or five, six issue miniseries and... Or maybe I don't know. I guess that's more than that's thirty right there. But like, and a couple of two parters. I I didn't think it was that long. I think it ends up like sixty issues when you cop when you because there's like Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, Golden Era, this era, that era, that era, and it ends up being like twelve issues per thing. And I think there's like five of them. So I wouldn't be surprised. In the omnibus form that they did at the end of the Dark Horse era. There's at least two volumes in the omnibus forms, and those things are thick. Yeah, they're massive. Okay, maybe there's more than I was thinking of. They're they're it's a lot. I, I have them back many. there somewhere. And they're digest size too. Like they're they're stacked because yeah, they're here. they make they make them like manga size almost. But actually they're more they're it's weird because they're in between manga size and standard comic. So it's like, but they are they are thick. Like they're there's a good size. There and there's at least two volumes of the Tales of the Jedi. So and like I'm looking at volume one on Amazon is like fifty two bucks. Holy Hannah! The tales, the it. Star Wars t- omnibus Tales of the Jedi two, is someone's asking one sixty five for the volume two. And like it has I said, the they're very hard to find. It took me like four years of hunting bins to get these at a reasonable price. 
Yeah. But those are and those both are something Tales too... of the Jedi volumes. Yeah. That's a lot but, of pages. They're... I like those. I like those because the how much you get. Oh my god! I don't like so that good. they're shrunk down. It just sucks out. So I don't like how how like they made them st- shorter, like a little yeah. bit digest, a little bit manga ish. It's weird, but like I have, I want to say like point to somewhere behind me, but like I have the Quinlan Voss one up here somewhere. Oh, they're up there. Yeah. I have the Quinlan Voss one, and I have a couple of the Clone Wars ones because, but I also have the Clone Wars in like the entire like the standard run along with the dark, the so, so part most of, of the. Me- Knights of Republic. Part of me loves that I have my old Dark Horse, like I have my old Dark Horse Boba Fett comics. I have a bunch of my Rogue Squadron ones. I have a bunch of these, but I missed a lot of the Tales of the Jedi stuff. I I know I did. I know I read Ula Keldrama and Exar Kun, and then I kind of fell off of it around that time. It's long. It's hard to keep track of. And if you try, I'm, to jump I'm back just in, gonna point out that. Uh that uh, you can get all of these digitally for pretty cheap um because I, I know i i bought them within the last five years on amazon okay uh they were even more on sale but i, I want to say like they're not they're they're you can get all of them and because there were a couple that were very low print runs that i didn't get in the initial yeah. versions um uh but um also there's only seven of them seven series and i know not all of them are six some, I think that there's one or two twos and there's a couple fives. So like okay. at most there's like 40 comics it's total still, in the it entire. It makes two volumes, which is a lot. Or 40 of issues. 40 issues. Yeah. That's a lot of reading. Yeah. That's digest. That's smaller. But yes, they also, are. They are because stuff goes in and out of print. They are pricey. So um, for this particular digitally. one, I would it's, suggest yeah, know, digitally. It's, it's like a buck an issue. <laughs> or cheaper if like when I got them, Amazon was having a huge like Star Wars comic sale, so everything was like three dollars hey, for you are following the proper procedure for we were gamers buy it on <laughs> sale that's exactly that's our motto uh okay look i'm gonna nerd out for you for just a second in the online the old republic video game the one that bioware made i managed to sneak in Keldroma as my legacy name which is one of those like you can create a family of jedi and like all your all your family of jedi get bonuses if you play as multiple characters and they had blocked things like skywalker and you couldn't name yourself like all the main names but apparently keldroma that went too deep for him was too for their for, uh, for their Kuhn, fact checkers coon was coon <laughs> was blocked you couldn't get coon wasn't allowed but keldroma was too deep for the fact checker well, he so, had he had the first double bladed lightsaber, so like, they're gonna know about him. Yeah, that's true. All was right. it, was that in visual? Was that in the comics visually? Visually before? Yeah, interesting. Oh yeah, before right. Maul. Yeah, he killed nice. his master by using two, I believe, is the story, and then was like, "Why don't we all use two all the time?" And then piece them together. Uh, someone could correct me from. It's been like 10 years since I've read those books. But what was interesting to me about that series, Ken, Kit, you know more about it than me, um, was the ambition, I think, to go beyond, A, what was known. I don't think that was a Lucas idea of what existed in the past this far back. This is before... That Old Republic video game I was talking about is before Ken. It's before Knights of the Old Republic. It's before anything that I could think of that would have existed at that point in time or later even. They decided like, hey, what was it like when Jedi just sort of were around but they weren't a religion? Or like people discovered they had force powers by riding on the backs of giant birds and then not dying. Or, (laughs) you know, like... That's what I remember from those early series is like they had these crazy looking starships. It was like they blended Star Destroyers with um, uh, fighters. No, like what were the Admiral Akbar species? Um, Mon Cal? Mon Cal. Like blend a Star Destroyer and a Mon Cal cruiser and like put the spires on it from the medical ship. And then they were like, yeah, these are what ships looked like back in the day. And, uh, it was crazy. 
and they just sort of had like brothers and sisters wandering around with i mean like to me i read this and i happened to just pick the right one of grabbing the keldroma series first because then you were in the right order when i got into the xr kun and frida nad and all that's like it was in the right order magically and i think around xr kun is where i was like i don't know if i like these people they're me they're all killing each other why are they doing that uh it was wacky at the time or did you not feel that way i i thought so i i read these back in the 90s when they were coming out um most of them and i at, when when comics when star wars finally started coming back in like the early to mid 90s i was just so hungry for anything that like i was like i i mean i was I was just all in on on everything at that point. So like the heir to the empire books, the uh, the dark empire comics, um, and uh, these in particular, I, I really resonated with me. Um, I thought that it was a really cool idea to go really far back in time, and not have to worry about any of the messing up anything or right. whatever. They 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 just had their own little sandbox that they could play in. Where you know we we and really when these were coming out in the like mid nineties, we didn't know anything about the Jedi. The only Jedi that we had ever talked to was like uh, half a movie of Obi Wan and and some Yoda stuff. Yeah, right. So there was no like, prequel yet. Yeah, right. This 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 was predating the prequels. We had no idea. They didn't have any idea. They were just like, all right. So this is probably what Jedi were like, and we're we're gonna go from there, and uh, we're gonna tell some stories of good and evil, and there's gonna be some Sith. And there's going to be some Jedi, and there's going to be some cool stories. Uh, we're going to go to Onderon. There's going to be flying monsters, and I, I I really dug it, and I thought that it was really really cool. How many of our pilots did we pick that were from either Alderaan or Corellia? Almost all of them. I mean, obviously not Sindula. She's from. Yeah, she's from. Uh, that's got to be like almost all of them i just realized where like, the twi'leks are from interesting okay i don't mean to, yes i don't know where uh, oh wait to... no uh pose from pose from or was he i think he was born on yavin yavin oh, yeah wow. he was at least conceived on yavin okay i think that it's fascinating to have gone so far back to like jedi is not a religion it's sort of a practice right like you had to go to a planet to learn what was Exar Kun's master's name. I can't remember the, the guy that had the weird, was he also, was he also Plukun's uh, species or am I crazy? I don't, I don't remember. I, I don't actually remember what you're talking about. So, so he had, <laughs> he had two masters, Exar Kun, who was like this crazy Jedi Ken. <laughs> was his sith master and not freed on nad the other Vodo, one Vodo. Vo, yeah Vodo C Siesk boss is Vodo the same species as i doubt he's the same species as as Plo Koon. oh no he is something else he is a krivaki yeah, yeah. So is like, he is he the one that looks like a lobster yes the lobster dude yeah, yeah. so he's yeah. the same species as a uh, therm scissor punch who what the lobster guy in Solo. Therm Scissor Punch? Yeah, I got his trading card at Denny's. Therm. <laughs> he chews on his he chews on his hands. They're playing when they're playing uh, which, Sabacc what's in Solo. I can't figure out what's he, name he, he like podcast. chews on his claws. We keep Therm Scissor Punch might be a better name than Motor Trend So Speeder of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> that Therm can't be real. Punch. I am I am not making this up. Okay, I'll have to Wikipedia that later. I have I, I have his trading card upstairs. I got it at Denny's. <laughs> I'm I'm not making this up. I believe you. He's a lobster. How is the quality only of a Denny's second. trading card? Is it good, nice and thick? It's standard. Okay. Like just like a topster. Top, tops. Whoever right. else makes All right, just whoever kidding. else makes still makes cards today. No, yeah. don't post that in the chat. Speaking I have to of read trading cards. I can't I can't re that does not look like Kravaki. That is a different species. That's a that's a crawdad. 
That's, I was just oh, guessing yeah. that they were the same species, but they have to be. I mean, that's the closest that I can get. Yeah, they're not. That's that's a that's a nephran. Nephran from Nepotis. Yeah. yeah, they look the same if you put them next to each other. They, they, but I mean, they're probably they could very well be from a, the same system. Sure, one's but. a lobster, <laughs> one's a crawdad. They all taste the same. <laughs> it was crazy uh, to read a story where it wasn't like. What what Obi Wan had described was what we had of like the Jedi Order was this massive religion and thing and like Jedi was a religion and you had got the the feeling that it had been a bigger thing and then this comic you have at the time you have Rogue Squadron and it's like okay well I know what that is that comes right after the Empire fell I know what the Empire is and then you have this other section it was like Tales of the Jedi. And there's not really Jedi. There's just kind of like, like Kit said, good and evil. And this guy, XR Kun, who's like getting trained by a dude who looks like a lobster and then gets turned to evil by a force ghost. It was the first use of a force ghost outside of the movies, too, as far as I can remember. It was crazy. I don't know. It felt crazy to me. I don't know. Yes, it was definitely different than everything else, but I don't know. It 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 felt it felt new and exciting and it didn't feel wrong. Like it, it just sort it. of felt like like it belonged. As soon as I started reading it, even though it was crazy and not like anything else in Star Wars that we'd ever had up until that point, or really anything since that point, there's not really a whole lot like Tales of the Jedi. But from the minute I started reading it, I, it just sort of felt right. I think it falls into the Mandalorian category of not going outside its zone too far, but also dragging small things in from the from yeah. the other stuff. Yeah, I'm remembering back to, because I'm looking at some of the covers right now, what kept me away from the Star Wars comics at the time was very much the Dark Horse House of Artists. And not not to that that's a bad thing. That's they had a very d- distinct style that is still found in a lot of comics today. But it was very much it wasn't. I was I was too much of a of a just a flights and tights. Give me like very basic comic art, and I wanted what I wanted. And so I I strayed away from these comics I don't know, because man. the art was was not for the for the tales of the Jedi stuff. I definitely feel that's true. Yeah. The the not maybe not not with the Rogue Squadron, but some of the because they were dealing with like planets and aliens and stuff that were just outside of my my scope and so the art style was very different like you can't i mean you look at that what did we say his name was not not therm the one before that XR, that guy keldroma Vodo. Vodo. Vodo, Vodo, the, Vodo, yeah. Yeah. Vodo Theosk, like this is a this is a cleaner version of what they gave us in the comics and so it's like it depended. It was on just where the art were, that kept me away, right? Like, yeah. Depending on where you were, because there's scenes like this that I can still hold on. I can still picture certain images in my head, like uh, Ulick had a brother, Clay K K, I think was his name. But like, I can remember their hug. I can remember when. I can remember when uh, he betrays. Who does he betray? Vima. I think he has the Sunriders are his. Uh, you probably heard of the Sunriders, but like his yeah. apprentices are the Sunriders, and they betray. You know, like the images are detailed enough when they needed to be. Yeah, they were kind of a mess sometimes, but I feel like Dark Horse had a, a style of way too much color and way strange colors because they were trying to be alien planets. And then in, in certain moments, just really being the first time that I can remember a page just sticking with you. It might be because it was star Wars, but it also has to be partly the art. I think one thing I think about this, the piece you shared too, though, like this is definitely a, a digitally colored piece. Like at this point, this has been, this is not like a scan from the book. And so some of the colors at the time were, added to maybe not i don't want to say drab but just led to it being more inaccessible to me okay. is the way i want to put it that's not fair. that it's bad it's just just at the time 
with the stuff, I was just like, huh, it just didn't quite hit for me. Whereas like some of the later stuff, I was just like, I was all in because they brought they had artists who were like more of a carryover from different houses. I don't think that's like, entirely true, Ken, because I remember and I don't know, Kit, if you grab this, too, but like the Boba Fett comics, they were printed on very, very high gloss paper. It wasn't comic book sheet. It was an old style Bubble comic Fett. paper. Bubble Fett. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But like they had this book called The Bounty on Barcuda that I still remember because it was every single page was super th- like thick cardstock gloss paper and the colors didn't they jumped off the page unlike other Dark Horse series at the time like the early adventures or other ones that I had, I was picking up off the, the shelf at the same time. And it, it seemed like they were willing to put in the money on, on being premium on the color side of things as much as they could. So gotcha. the drawings were still very weird and, and I get your point, but, uh, dark horse. That was just, that was just for me that I just, cause we are start we're talking about it and I'm looking at images and I'm like, Oh, this is another thing that never quite at the time didn't quite land for me. Yeah. But if yeah. You, if you had to pick a storyline kit from the Tales of the Jedi run. I really liked the Nomi Sunrider story. So I thought that, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, but I also really liked I mean, I really liked the Tales of the Jedi. Um, like I said, uh, some of the later series had really low print runs and I wasn't able to pick up some of the stuff near the end yeah. but um yeah the 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 when uh the keldromas and taught danita go to uh onderon that was a great one i love the nomi sunrider story that that one would probably be my favorite but i mean i i really like those stories those were those were really good stories i didn't i didn't realize how much i would connect with nomi sunrider until later in my life <laughs> right like her story is kind of an adult story where she yeah. marries a Jedi, she has a baby with a Jedi, and then he's obviously uh, spoilers for a 1990s comic. But Ander, her husband, is is later on in the series, and you're like, well, that's like that's like at the beginning of the first issue. So yeah. I, I mean, like, is it though? He, he dies. No, he dies pretty. He dies pretty quickly. Am I in, conflating in her, her being a younger character in another series then? Oh, maybe. When she's when, in, when she's in other another series as like a really young trainee or something. Oh, I, I guess I'm not either. I haven't read that one, or I'm not remembering that. Or I'm remembering it but, wrong. It's but the one the one where he dies, he dies fairly early in the story because it's her it's her story. He dies like I don't know halfway through the first issue or something. Right. But yeah, it's crazy. And then like she doesn't get drawn into she doesn't get drawn into being a Jedi right away. As far as I remember, she kind of is like, nah, I'm done with this whole like Jedi thing. And that was kind of new at the time. Right. too. Well, basically, yeah, her, her husband gets killed by like some, I think they were just like gangsters thugs. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and she basically has to defend herself and her child. So she just picks up the lightsaber and she is also force sensitive and she picks up the lightsaber and kills him. Uh, and then uh, she meets, I don't remember who the who her Jedi Master was, but she meets her, her husband's. And uh, I, no, 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 he, he was an alien. Uh, but um, I think he I think he was like a four legged. I think he's like he kind of looks vaguely like a horse, but I can't remember what his she name meets is. Kill drama but, at some point. I remember. Yes, but that's not that's not who I'm talking about. So in, in at the beginning of her her like coming of joining the jedi story he's the one who he might have even been her husband's uh um master maybe i'm trying to remember because it's been a while since i've read that they might have been going to meet him but i can't remember but uh he keeps trying to get her he's like you've got all of these powers you need to be a jedi and she's like i don't ever want to fight again i just want to like not have anything to do with this i just want to yep. leave and get on with my life yeah, yeah. It was she's of- a very reluctant jedi 
That's like but, four different masters listed on her <laughs> Wikipedia page. Well, you have Does to, one of them kind of like, look like a horse? Well, some of them remember our first ghosts at the point that she's alive, like Vodo and others, I think, yeah. show up and train her. But they're long okay. dead because they were murdered by Kuhn and a couple other people before before them. Yeah. There you go. See, you found pictures from Barcuda. Look at those colors. Crazy. Purple everywhere. <laughs> Uh, her mass, the 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 four legged one you're referring to, I think, is Thawne. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, are they going to make a Therm Scissor Punch Black Series figure? Probably. They but have. it'll be a it'll be an exclusive somewhere that you can't get it. Denny's exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> Sizzler or uh, um um not Sizzler. Uh, what's the seafood one? Sizzler is a Red Lobster one. Red It'll be Red Lobster. Lobster. Yeah. It'll be a Red Lobster exclusive. Joe's Crab Shack Black Series <laughs> exclusive Therm Scissor Punch. Oh, man, I got to get that. I'd buy it if it said Joe's Crab Shack on the front of it. <laughs> it has their like the branding right there on the yeah. side. If they change Just like the, when it's you not black. Pop. It's the the box is the colors of Joe's Crab Shack. It's like when they get a pop that has an exclusive sticker on it. Like, oh no, that's the rare one. That's got the yeah. That's got the sticker on there. Just we know what that Peel the for. sticker right off and put it on a different box. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Third Therm, we've punch. decided will be the hardest Black Series to get. But Ken, I went to Target for you a couple times. You went to Target for us. Okay, you were there. You were buying other stuff. This was a this is a mutually beneficial thing. We're working together. I didn't send you off into the wilds of Target in the during a pandemic. You were like, well, I'm already going to be out there. Yeah. It's like essentially you're going out there in your bounty hunter gear and, you know, you, you've got to get other supplies. You might as well look and see if they have some power converters. So it's like oh, you were going to be there anyways. I'm having f like <laughs> haunted flashbacks to how you're going to leave me in the middle of when we play the uh, the zombie game. Like, no, no, just go in the barn <laughs> over there and check for my stuff, too. <laughs> I always cut that. I cut and I cover everyone. The only person who, who's lost someone is Dixon. And that's because he stood next to the flaming car. Don't stand next to the flaming car. It's a good rule for anyone. That's fair. Well, then he got hit by a by a blood juggernaut. Oh, the blood yeah. juggernaut ripped him in half. Oh, that was that's a different game. He's that? lost two people. <laughs> I guess has Dixon lost two people yeah. during our play? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So you cover everybody but Dixon, basically. Okay. That says so that says. <laughs> I wonder about why. I definitely need to. I wonder why. I need to, hmm. I need to work on that. <laughs> but uh, yes, so in in your adventures, for a galaxy, one might say of adventures. <laughs> have you watched more of those? By the way. Yeah, I have actually. I watch a few of them with the kids. Um, they're so good. They're okay. Yeah. What? They're like okay. they're so I, I, beautifully animated. I, yes, just... they're good in that sense. They're hard in the sense that a lot of them are self-referential, and my kids haven't seen Star Wars beyond that. They've read the books yeah. like of Star Wars, but yeah, yeah. You kind of no, just that, have that's, to that's fair. Let it be what it is. They, they're fine. It's it's very much if if you're not familiar with it, it's not really it's it doesn't impart to you like oh who are these characters? I'm happy but they it, exist. A, yeah, but that's fair. It's a good read on it. Uh, okay. This is a huge controversy all over the internet about how unavailable the new Target exclusive Galaxy's Edge. And did I get all that right? Yes. So give it some time. The Millennium Falcon. I checked right before we recorded this. The Millennium Falcon is right now available. If you go to Target.com, uh, you can put one in your cart and get one. The four hundred dollar Millennium Falcon. So uh, give it some time. Maybe. Maybe Target will get some in stock. Maybe the, maybe when the market drops, all of the scalpers will take them back to Target, and they'll all miraculously show back up on the shelves. What is this? Oh, is it a vintage series Millennium Falcon? Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a. I'm not even sure if it's a repaint, but it's like the. Uh, they released it like ten years ago, as um, Legacy. Uh -huh. And then it's 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 by far the best Millennium Falcon, well, this but uh, it's Hanuel also it's also really overpriced. Like it should probably be. I mean, really, it should be like the last time that it came out, it was like one hundred and fifty dollars, and this time they stuck two figures in there, and now it's four hundred. They so well, they put two figures and some porgs 
and you can change the deflector dish. Yeah. And it comes the, with the, the toy. The Falcon pod. toy itself is virtually unchanged from the last time that it came out as the Legacy Falcon. Fair, fair point. It I heard there good. were new sounds in it, but uh, that may be, like, yeah. And, uh, and like the previous version was like 200, which I mean, given it's double. Was it 200? Price. I thought it was 150, but okay. So give me the back. I, well, um, yeah. Give me I the may, backstory may be on wrong. this, though. This is. I like that it says Star Wars A New Hope and Smuggler's Run. Like the Millennium Falcon has only been in two things. Yeah. <laughs> Although it does come with Hondo, but yeah. I don't know if Hondo's worth $200. I mean, I love Hondo, but. Can you not get a vintage size Hondo in anything else? Oh, no. You can get. He's coming out. Uh, a carded all by himself vintage well, hondo although I, i'm not sure if it's the same version because is this is this the same version or is this like a special galaxy's Smugglers edge version of hondo version of hondo and you, yeah. you get the rebels one and the other wow two different cuts of hondo you're screwed yeah well i i don't care that much i mean <laughs> well actually you guys are you guys are don't forget it comes with i'm double checking it comes with eight figures eight is it eight Oh, because yeah, of the porgs? The porgs don't count as full oh, figures. They... It comes with Tui and Hondo and some porgs. Come on. Fair enough. Okay. It's six it comes with six porgs. Chewy Hondo and six porgs. You know porgs. what's gonna happen to those I'm not, porgs? I'm not my bashing dog, porgs. My but dog a porg is gonna count eat. As a full I'm bashing I am bashing porgs, first of all. And second of all, my dog is gonna eat those porgs, so it only comes with two figures. <laughs> yeah. So when will... the angry internet people come after us. I just want to point out you you want to direct your angry emails at Andy. Yeah, Andy at the internet. The angry porg army needs to go after Andy. Okay, not, look, you want to have a porg the rest of off? Us. I'll have a porg <laughs> off. I'm not defending them. I'm just not attacking them. <laughs> Chewy eats them I'm for not a saying reason. You're wrong. Okay, something I'm very curious about now because in this in the in the box that I do like the big the packaging it looks great because it is that vintage style collection packaging, but in the packaging it also shows like three canisters of like essentially like um, minerals that they could be smuggling. I'm like, do those three canisters come with it? I don't think they do, but I'm now I'm like that's a missed opportunity because it's for four hundred dollars. Give me some canisters to smuggle because that would be awesome. And oh wait, does it, it also has come with it? They can't put it, it on also the box has, if they're not in there. It has the escape pod. It does have the well, escape pod. Okay, so I can I can confirm. It, I don't know whether it comes with the Falcon or not, but those canisters absolutely come with the Rogue One tank because I got that, and it, it comes with those, and they have Kyber crystals in them. Oh, that's awesome! Or virtually identical canisters like that. Yeah, huh. that you can that the, you can take off yeah. the tank and pull the little Kyber crystals out of. Looking at the uh, like another shot, I don't think they come. I don't think they're in it. Which no, but me you out. can fit Hondo in the escape pod that he never used. Yeah, that was never in this in this version of the Falcon, but no, because whatever. they don't list it in Solo, a Star Wars story. They only list it as a New Hope and Smuggler's <laughs> Run. Yep. Man, that is okay. So you can get the four hundred dollar Millennium Falcon, but people are upset that you can't get a bunch of stormtroopers. Yeah, a lot of different. So, uh, part of the back part of the backstory on this too is there were these three packs I put in quotations available within the Disney park. So is this because could, Disney is closed that they've come to this conclusion of we need to sell toys. So let's give them to target to sell. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a matter of that, you know, Disney parks are closed because technically speaking, they're still Disneyland or sorry, Disney world. that's still open. And I, I don't know about the, the international Disney parks. I don't know if they're open. So, but that's definitely a possibility. I thought of that when I first, when I first heard about this, I'm curious though because essentially it could just be that they want to get more use out of the molds, because a lot of these are just reuses from these three packs. Oh, okay. They had a they had a three pack that had, um, a a mountain trooper, I want to say Phasma, and then Commander Pyre, who's like a gold plated, looking uh trooper from like, where? a la Phasma from uh Rise of the I'm sorry from the Resistance cartoon is where I first saw Commander Pyre. Okay. So that's where he's from, and it's a three-pack with them and maybe, like, a mouse droid or something. Like, there's, that was theirs. There was a droid pack with... Uh, no, actually, the mouse droid was with R2, BB-8, C-3PO, and Rex. Rex, as, as some of you know, is the DJ within the new Galaxy's Edge uh, Batu... Uh, who's it? It's 
it's not Doc Ondar's Cantina. No, maybe it is. No, Ogus Cantina. It's in Ogus Cantino, and that's where Rex is. But he's also the same droid that used to pilot the original Star Tours ride, which that's where I love him from. Yeah, and I so, really feel that's a missed opportunity to have kept him for one of those or something because he's so yeah. much different. That ride, oh, this is a whole different tangent, but that ride was very different <laughs> when he was piloting versus when C-3PO was piloting. It was a different vibe. Yeah, voiced by Pee Wee Herman. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love, I loved the Rex back in the day. I still love the old star tours. I, 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 I agree. I think they had, they've always had four shuttles at star tours, at least I'm thinking of the one in California, leave one shuttle untouched, do that old simulation there, do the other three and they're all modular. They do whatever you need to do them, them to do. Um, and then there's also a Hondo three pack, which was like, uh, Chewy, Ray, Porgs and Hondo. And that Hondo was, they were all exclusive to the parks. So you had a lot of Black Series people who were collecting and like, okay, well, who can go to the park and buy me a $60 set just to get Hondo, Rex, and Commander Pyre. But the Stone Trooper was a repaint of, I mean, Commander Pyre was a repaint and then Stone Trooper was a repaint of a, a Shore Trooper. But Pyre, the, sto- the, the Shore Trooper, shore and trooper. Hondo, the Shore Trooper from... Um, Oh, the a scarab one. trooper. Yeah, scarab trooper. Okay. Yeah. They're yeah. called shore so troopers. There's some people call them shore troopers because the first time we see them, they're walking along the shore Coastal in Rogue Defender One. Coastal Defender Stormtroopers, also known as store. I have always thought they were called scarab troopers. Well, I mean, if those troopers were in other locations outside of scarab, yeah, they would have they were another on name. Dundar, Dan, 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 Dan. Oh man, I'm not gonna even try. There's multiple planets listed here for some sort of cannon. Yeah. And so these were all they they repainted a lot of different stuff and they just they've been available through the parks. But they made a deal with Target to also uh, sell them as single packed figures. So it's like, okay, now we can start to get them. If you can't go to the parks, if you can't make it, you can find them in the middle of, you know, in Piedmont, North Dakota. You can find you can go out and get a Hondo, a Rex, these uh, sorry, these types of characters. And then, like, it was the pre orders were, of course, a bit of a shit show because of the bots on the internet and the people who are just running, you know, running bots to be able to just to buy a, a billion of them and then resell them. And then the the drop in stores was thrown off because some people, some stores respect street dates, some don't because they just don't know or don't care, a combination of the two. And so that has caused for, and also they had a nice display end cap set up. That's caused a lot of like, okay, can we find these figures? Some people were getting them because they broke street date. They had them already. And they even showed off that there's a Cardinal figure as well who was not available until this. And they weren't even in the parks. Like, this is a new specific figure. Cardinal originally popped up in a novel, uh, I believe the Phasma novel. And then later on, a, a secondary novel based around Batu and Galaxy's Edge, the, the Black Spire's outpost. Oh, is that the one with where you find out? That's the red the, one. Who the... Uh... The woman running around Galaxy's Edges. Vi. Yeah. Vi, That's I the, guess is her name. Yeah. She, she's in both the Phasma novel and the Black Spire's Outpost novel. Nice. Vi Marathi, I believe her name is. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know who she was. She was taking pictures with people last time I was there. I said, oh, huh, that's weird. I didn't think they like allowed like costumed people to... Apparently she's yeah. a character... <laughs> Yeah, she's she's by Marathi. She's from the new canon. And she's she's cool. I've only I've only seen a bit of her story, but she's also in a new Lego set too, which we can touch on later. But anyways, part, and that, that was also part of this drop of like, hey, Galaxy's Edge, trying to push out the, you know, it's it's another part of their brand. It's another thing they want to push. So there's actually two new Galax, uh, Galaxy Galaxy Adventure shorts about Batu and the Black Spire's Outpost. Um. Yeah, the, the, there's also Black Spire's Outpost stuff. And The um, Sims. In The Sims. In yeah. The Sims, yeah. And so it's like they're they're pushing as another brand, and it's like, I you know, I'm fine with that. I love Star Tours, so it's like I was happy when... Like, I loved when you finish Star Tours, you'd go down into the, the Star Trader, and you could find certain toys that are based on... Like, you could find the ride, the like the vintage collection-sized uh, Star Tours ship. And it had, like, they did Rex and stuff in the end there, but, like, they were exclusives. But that time, we didn't think too much about exclusives. We were just like, oh, cool, it's here. That's that's fine. That's exactly what I want. But now, with everything as it is, everyone's hunting for, for it, and you've got to try and track down 
Rex and the rest of the troopers. So I don't know. I think Kit is already has has the most sane viewpoint of toys of the three of us, maybe. Ken has the most expansive one. And I'm the most lost in terms of what I want. I'm all over the place. This experience is not upsetting to me, really, because it's what I expected when uh, you described to me what was going to happen here. But it leaves me thinking, uh, both of you should give me your pitch of what I need to uh, collect, because I'm kind of like this at this point. I'm like, there's too much of all of them to collect. I've got my Dash Rendar vintage collection figure, so the essentials are covered. <laughs> At least until the Black Series comes out. Oh, that's fine. Uh, I'll pay whatever <laughs> the scalper wants. The two, the two pack with him and and Lebo. Oh man, I'm in yeah, for that. I, I, like, make, I, I, dude, I, make I can that. sell some figures if they need me to. Make, like, I can be like, this that. is how you set this up. What What's your pitch? After seeing what's happened here, and I might have the answer for you in a minute, but of the Black Series, the vintage, the the ships, the what should I do here? I've got some of all of them, but I, I'm at a loss to discover what where I really fit into the collection landscape as it's now developing. Of I I can't I'm I got too much on my plate. We're adults how many times can you run to target weekly to try and find, you know, figures, stuff like that? Like what is the collection landscape and participation level that we as adults should be participating in? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll go first because I don't know. Kit, do you have a a good answer or where where are you landing on this? Uh, I never pay scalper prices I, I mean like if something came out like if i missed something and it came out five years ago and like has been out of print for a long time and like i just missed it and now it's worth more that's a that's a different story but like i'm not gonna go pay double to somebody for a mandalorian figure that i want because that, that should be on the shelf right now because they go to target three times a week and pick them all off and put them up on facebook i'm, I'm just like as a matter of principle i'm not gonna do that um You'd rather see and if you want until yeah, if, five if years that from now means, it's the same price, you'll still buy it then. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, I I follow pretty closely on the Kit Fisto stuff, and I'm usually able to pre-order things, stuff like this, where if it's like you know Target doesn't tell anybody and drops a pre-order thing at six a.m. Pacific Coast time and out of the blue, and I don't hear about it, that's going to tick me off. But right, yeah, because uh, all the nine a.m. East Coasters got them all. Yeah, um, but luckily for me, that has not happened, and I try to keep a really close eye on the Kit Fisto stuff that I really want so that I can pre-order it. Um, I haven't really had that much of a problem with the, the with the, the limited amount of stuff that I want to buy that's brand new. Um, usually I can get it. Uh, I can pre-order it. Uh, I hear about it with enough time that I can go on to one of the other sites, Entertainment Earth or Big Bad Toy Store or something, and pre-order it and get it. Um, and I've had pretty good luck. I also open, so I don't care about the, the packaging. So if I can find it on Amazon and it shows up in a bubble mailer (laughs) completely smushed or whatever, as long as the figure's okay and actually in the bag, then, uh, (laughs) I, I don't really care that much. Um, so, uh, but that's, that's basically where, where I stand on these things. Um, I also, I, I haven't been to as the one of us that doesn't live in Southern California, I haven't been to Disneyland to galaxy's edge, uh, since it opened yet, uh, since it opened. And so I don't, uh, you know, I've only been on star tours in my entire life. I've only been on star tours. I don't know, a half dozen times. So like, I know, but, uh, Ken, I'm just like, I'm hurting for him. I'm like, I can the sharp it's, intake it's, of breath and holding the left arm. I don't. So so I don't have the same attachment to to the robot Rex that you guys have. So I don't oh, I don't man. need him and and whatnot. I love so Rex. it's yeah. it's unhealthy how much I am connected to that. They say nostalgia is the worst impulse, right? Because like it'll it drive is. you to insanity for things like 
I remember Rex being my pilot for 20 something years. And I went there multiple times a year. It was always Rex. I'd go to star tours every time. But yeah. uh, my, my main thing is that exclusives are terrible and I hate them. Whether they are at comic con or Disneyland or target. I hate exclusives. They're bad for the consumer. I, I just, I just want to give Hasbro my money. I shouldn't have to jump through hoops to do that. Like, I, I don't know. I, I know lots of people have, have speculated as to what, what the problems are. I mean, besides the obvious problem of like exclusives, but Damn like what, right. Why, why, why it's so hard for Hasbro to get certain things into the hands of the people that want it. But like, it shouldn't be this hard for me. I shouldn't have to jump through all these hoops to give them my money. Uh, they should, they should make it easier for me. Okay. And you're, Hasbro should figure out a way to to take my money. They you, should be smart enough to figure out a way to do that. You have a relatively simple collecting philosophy of like Kit Fisto, Death Troopers, vintage size only. You kind of like narrow well, it all down. Well, I'll buy any I'll buy any any size of Kit Fisto. I mean, if they make, <laughs> if they make a twelve foot tall Kit Fisto, I'll just buy a different house and figure out where to put him. But but outside of that, down. yeah, you generally I only I only collect three and three quarter inch. Cause that's what I've been collecting since I was, you know, yeah. a little, little, little kid. They are so. the more classic size, right? Yeah. 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 No, and that's, that's definitely reasonable. And it's like, I, everything he said, I agree with too. And also part of it that makes it easier or makes it more accessible is that if you kind of, you find yourself laser focused on like, okay, so the one is that the predominant amount of stuff that he collects is a scale that is more readily available. The vintage collection has has it's not it's not what it once was as far as collectability. So it's like he doesn't have to fight an army of collectors to get to it. So it's definitely that makes it easier. So the black also like the army of collectors is what you're saying. Yeah, that that is that's the current new. That's the current trend for Star Wars right now is the black series. Huh. Um, and because it's because it's it's taken on the same scale as Marvel Legends, the the they're more detailed. Uh, I mean, they look. They they're really more detailed, good. but like they're the they're all this they're all within the same scale. So you can have I mean I've said it before you can have a Spider Man and Snake Eyes and Darth Vader and like all of the different fandoms are in the six inch scale that you right. can kind of put together and bring together in so that way. Where do you fall on the on the what items in the are the ones that you de- gravitate towards then? Um, as far as to to keep it easier for collecting, I say work with others. And so it's like, like you said, you can't go to, you can't go to target five times a week. Like realistically, we shouldn't be in this current climate. We shouldn't be going there five times a week. But if your five, if you have seven friends, then they all go to target once a week for supplies. Like that's where they get their toilet paper. They get their basic necessities. Um, then, Hey, like, Hey Mike, well, you're over at target. If you wander down this aisle and see if you see anything, let me know. Yeah, Mike. Or, yeah, we're talking to you. And so then, it's like, Dixon will be out, and he'll be like, oh, well, he's going to do his his shopping run. So, Dixon, if you happen to go down this toy aisle, and you see this figure, and I'll send him a picture of it. Say, so if you see this figure, let me know. Yeah. And now you have, it's it's exponential. So, it's, But then on that right, too, though, I'm also looking like, okay, I know Dixon is looking for the Silver Centurion Marvel Legend figure. So, like, okay. I have a list in my head and I think on my phone of like, I am looking for four silver centurions or five silver centurions right now for Ken Dixon, Brian Jenkins, Joe Napiel, uh, Peter Nguyen and myself. And so it's like, I'm trying to find them. Those are Walgreens exclusives. So it's like, what? I'm those. Yeah. Cause Walgreens has their own exclusives too. What? Like I have a, yeah. What but like a long time. Like, what does Walgreens yeah. have that people want that they need? Like Target and Walmart exist. How does how does Walgreens get exclusives? They got dude. They got one of the best ones in my opinion is the general. Oh yeah, they've yeah, got money. Yeah, yeah, I see the money hand yeah. over there. <laughs> yeah, and that's so it's how like GameStop they, keeps getting stuff. Yeah, they just keep I have no mortgaging idea. off stores to get more money for or something. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, and they have dude. They have a new. They just announced this week they have a new Darth Nihilus figure. GameStop? For GameStop, yeah. I don't know how the to... One... Who's still giving GameStop exclusives? They are functionally out of business. Asbro? I don't... No, <laughs> game companies are stu- still doing it too. I just... I don't understand. 
someone just gets a phone call from GameStop or something and they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. It was like the only people going there are scalpers for toys. And that's the only people left going to GameStop. Yeah. Well, they also got a, a Hulk exclusive figure that goes along with the new Avengers Ubisoft game. Wonderful. So it's like they've they've just got the, the pockets to which I have no idea where they get the pockets, but they just have the money to be like, hey, Hasbro make this an exclusive for us. But they've also done stuff where it's like a shared exclusive, like the the Commander Fox for the clone troopers was exclusive to GameStop and another location. And like then it eventually became like and there's a timed exclusive, too. So it was like then Big Bad Toy Store got it and a few other locations got it. Timed exclusives so the, are fine. If they yeah. tell you up front, this is a timed exclusive, like GameStop will get it first and then it will go wide. And I'm like, yeah. fine, I'll wait for it to go wide. No problem. Yeah. And that's one thing to talk about, too, is that, that the these single packed special cards have showed up in the uh, in the parks now. So you can get just the Rex droid, just the Phas- or not Phasma, just the Pyre. And these figures are individually available it, it are starting to pop up in the parks so that yeah. that can help some people that's true well i think so. i have my own answer which is i may be landing on my own strategy here and i want to know what you guys think lego uh, one other thing too that ties in with this is <laughs> if you have friends on message boards as well look for I them there. he just but stepped all over it he's just like nah yeah. i'm still going it's all good go ahead no 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 man yeah, I mean, if you're really into it, and if you like have to have certain figures, I I've grown out of have to have. I really miss not got having gotten the Rex right. Like that's any size Rex I would I would grab. Where I have, I don't think he's gone yet. No, I, I, I think I, he's I'm still just missed the, the pre order of it. But I have a a the pop figure Rex that was exclusive to Downtown Disney for a while. I don't know yeah. if it's still exclusive to Downtown Disney. Probably not. But like I went and grabbed that. I think that. it is. It's a it's a parks exclusive. Yeah. So I mean I have the pop figure because like I want Rex. Like as much as Kit likes getting Kit Fisto, I'd buy multiple sizes of him. Um, you know I like K2SO, but I don't think I'd go chasing every K2SO figure. Maybe I would. I don't know. I still am kind of like on the fence about vintage versus not vintage versus you know where where my general action figure collection should go. I'm a little bit lost podcast at we were gamers.com if you have helpful suggestions uh but i'm landing on maybe the legos aren't so hard to find actually you can just order them on a website and get them sent to your house except for the exclusives what, what? there's a lot of exclusive what, legos what, 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 what? No, no 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 don't tell me that are you talking about just star wars legos yeah uh-huh okay what exclusive legos are, are you talking about Aren't there exclusive Legos every year at Comic Con that you can oh, only get at a Comic Con? Yes, there are exclusive yeah. Legos at Comic Con. You can get certain ones that go for like hundreds of dollars. Yeah, like the that was what, was what I was talking about. Maybe duck, not Star Wars one, Darkwing Duck like or Legos something. This last year or something, Ken, two years ago, it's like a there's like a bunch. Duck? Of, I don't know some duck. The, oh, the Deadpool duck. Deadpool duck. Yeah, Deadpool yeah. duck. It's like three hundred dollars for one minifigure. I, yeah. I can leave that stuff go, like out of my life. I can I can make that choice. <laughs> well, that's one thing too. As part of this Galaxy's Edge, is they released a new uh, a resistance um, resistance troop carrier that's part of the Rise of the Resistance ride. Oh, okay. And that's it's it's it comes with Vibrati. It comes with an, uh, a Mon Cal character. What size? And two droids. Vintage. No, no, no. It's Lego. Oh, it's a Lego. Yeah, Wait, it's what? a Lego set. Yeah, so it's a Lego not set. On the that's, Lego website. It is. Um, I actually looked today because I saw it in the Target. It's a hundred dollars. It comes with uh, two minifigures and then two droid scaled minifigures. Really? Uh, Resistance troop carrier. I could probably give you the. Actually, I could probably give. Is that you the, different than the Resistance ITS transport? Um, possibly. <laughs> Let me actually because I I have it on my phone. Here you go. Because that's on the Target website. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. The Resistance okay. ITS transport. Uh, the it is on the it's set number seven five two nine three, and it is available at at Lego.com. So if it's not going to go on sale at Target, I will probably buy it on the Lego store. That way, I get my oh. VIP points. This is oh okay. See, I looked at that and I was like, I have no idea what that's from. 
And so I kind of was like, meh, whatever. I don't know what that is. Yeah. But, and it has the Galaxy's Edge stamp on it. Like it's part of that branding. So that's and from I the ride that. or something? What is that mm-hmm. from? It's from the ride Rise of, Rise of the Resistance. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And so, and like I said, that Vimerati character that you saw that you didn't know who it was, yeah. she, they made a Lego character of her in that set. And I'm like, that's yeah, I see cool. Her right here it's with like, the blue hair. Yeah. And it also has a Mon Cal character who's kind of unique, uh, Commander Beck, I believe. Okay. So, yeah, like I, I like. I like that they did this because it's like it's we did get a chance. To... Yeah. Why is it so much? It's so bland. It's, it's just a giant I mean, tube. Yeah, I mean, it's not horrible as far as parts parts count wise. It is a good. It's a decent set. It has a good open space in the middle because it does fit a bunch of minifigures. If you want to make use it as a troop transport, it's not. I don't know. I I think I would have liked a few more characters myself, a few more minifigures. But as far as the 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 parts count, it's not atrocious. It's one of the better Star Wars sets as far as like price per piece. Yeah, but price per piece has to be what you get, which is why what I was leading to, which was like the new Razor Crest, the UCS A Wing, a couple other things I just ordered actually. Um I'm I'm really happy with the idea of like maybe I should just limit myself to some of the Star Wars ships in Lego format, because then you get the fun of building them, put them on a shelf. They look cool because they're ships. Like minifigures, yeah, they're all right. I don't really care about displaying the minifigures as much. But like having a shelf full of ships is kind of a cool idea. And if I limit myself to like UCS-ish scale, I might not be too upset at because then you can't you can track those down pretty easily. But I noticed uh the other big thing that came out in the Lego world, other than this resistance ship, apparently. Um you guys want to help me clear out my garage so we can make a giant tattooing <laughs> life, life, yes, life size. I do. I've got, I've got the UCS millennium Falcon. If we buy the Moss Eisley cantina, I'm sure so we I could put our this. heads together and make a life size spaceport. Go around the Falcon. We'll just throw a bunch of sand on the floor. No, done. no, no. You use you use uh, one by one tile pieces, and that's the sand. No, because you, you gotta can, like. <laughs> can you have to be able to walk on it without shoes on? Because that's gonna... why I said tiles and not studs. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so they're flatter. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys so, think? I'm on board because the then. Yeah, because then we also build a port for the Razor Crest to land in. Yeah, and we have spots. I was I thinking have a Razor Crest. I just ordered it. Yeah, and so it's the, not the I was same scale. so. Yeah, I didn't get the Falcon just because of the price, and it's now gone. Oh, is it really? And I, it's pre, I'm pretty sure it's just because the problem is there's still some kicking around in certain Lego stores. So it's it's essentially it's gone for all intents and purposes because I'm not gonna pay, I'm not gonna pay another. 20 to 30 percent on top of what the prices of that is on the on the secondary market it's a lot i'll wait till the i'll wait till the third version comes around when i'm 85 and i'll buy it then um and so i got i've got the razor crest and i've got a couple of the ships like i've got a, i've got a, an a-wing that i customize myself because i like the color scheme a little bit more that ucs a-wing so, is big it's good size it looks good um i like it I, i've been collecting all the a-wings so far actually trying to find okay. one that I like. And every single one of the little A-Wings has something wrong with it that I don't like. And I saw that oh. UCS one, and I was like, that's it. I'm done. It's rounded. It's got the right tails. It's got the right guns. A lot of the problems that have gone gone through. I, I just feel like the rat race is less on Legos. Because it's about the price, right? Not everyone's going to run out tomorrow and buy a $350 Moss Eisley Cantina. Yeah. Or an $800 Millennium Falcon. And so you have those few weeks to wait, maybe see if it goes on sale. If it doesn't for Black Friday, you just get it or whatever. And then, you know, you can kind of pick and choose. Because, like, well, I don't like that ship, so I don't need, you know, I need a B-Wing. Although, I would probably take a B-Wing. That's pretty cool. If it folded correctly. I'm st- I'm still mystified that there's not an Outrider. Like I don't see how that hasn't been made it's not in Lego anymore, form. Anymore, buddy. No, but like uh, it's it's not popular it's anymore. But niche. yeah, it's pretty niche. niche but they've right used word, it. Kit. They've used it in 
in both Rebels and in the and in the EU. It, hold on. And it's, they used it in one episode of Rebels and they blew it up. And they didn't even get the right YK number. Wasn't it in Rise of Skywalker? Or YT number. Sorry, not YK number. It uh, might have been in Rise of Skywalker. I thought it was in the, you know, when they see all the ships that show up. Oh, I'm sure oh, it is. Yeah. I, I think it was in there. Yeah. And so it's like, but it's not a, like, I'm, you can, if you took a, a Falcon set, you could probably build your own. So why is it not, why have they not just said like, well, we can do it. I mean, it's, it's all within our license and like that would still sell, I think like, and because you with Star Wars, you're not necessarily like with Star Wars Legos, you're not like, oh, this is good. It's the only way you can build it. You can do whatever you want. Like these parts can come together however you need to. So it's like, just make that set. And I mean, the harder part would be like, oh, I need a Dash Rendar, like Lego character in there. Cause then you're like, okay, who owns a trademark for Dash? Still, See, I mean, so that's what I was just about to bring up. Someone? Yep. I was yeah. just about to say, you know, a lot of these EU novels and stuff, they probably are trying to let the licenses lapse and not pay people for them. And it brings me to the last thing I want to talk about today. How do you feel about the Lego trademark battle going on in the EU? I don't know what you're talking about. The Lego yeah, aware. The Lego Razor Crest has now been rebranded oh, the Lego yeah, yeah. Bounty Hunter ship in the EU because a German in the, in the you're in the European market. That's in the what European you mean by market. EU. Yes. Sorry, yeah, the sorry. EU okay. being the European market. <laughs> Not, not the, the extended universe, universe that I've said yeah. the entire time on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The real world snuck in. Sons of bitches. <laughs> the European market had they, uh, they, this German company. I'm not even going to remember the name or look it up. Uh, that makes aftermarket Lego products. Trademarks. Like yeah. Bo- yeah. no, is, that, is, that a, is that a knockoff like a lego knockoff it's like a lego knockoff but they make stuff that connects to legos so like it's like oh, a if, mega blocks yes but, but so like if you bought mega okay. so, so like here's but it works with legos yeah right so like okay you go to lego and you buy set 7588 and then you buy our set 7588-1 and you put them together and you can make this okay is the type of company this was they trademarked at the beginning of the year, a they reapplied for a lapsed trademark of the Razor Crest, not the Razor Crest, Razor Crest, uh, that they I guess had had before this that they had let lapse. They let it, they they grabbed it again, and now are making full bootleg sets of the Razor Crest, <laughs> and the EU sided with them. And said that Lego was not allowed to call their set the Razor Crest and they had to change it. Lego, who has the Lucasfilm license for the but ship. But it looks like the ship. Yes, from the it looks ex- it's this close. Right, yeah. I don't know. It's 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 not at this point it's it's too it's there's I don't know how. All the, I, it's insane that they're just essentially like I no, just, it's our Superman. We called it Superman first. <laughs> no, just, we're DC. How did you like? How yeah. is this possible? It's like we but created just like, Super Dash Man, and he's blue and red and has an S. And so you can't have Superman one word, and you can't make him have a red S either. It's like, but I've been That's... printing Superman for thirty years. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. it's it's unbelievable that they had to do that, and I'm like, that seems ridiculous. I'm I'm on the side of of I mean it's 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 stupid to say like I'm on the side of the giant multinational corporation that is Disney Lego Star Wars but it's just like that's that's ridiculous like I'm going to go out there and like the month before it just in Germany I now own the license to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles if you want to sell off these figure these toys in the you got to pay me for the license and like no no that's our thing we made that go to hell like, <laughs> i just don't oh my I don't god get how they can this is the part of the european law that i don't get is how they can make a bootleg of the ship without the license from lucasfilm but hold the trademark for the name so they can make the bootleg of the ship without a license and you're like yeah oh, yeah I don't and know. for I'm, the I'm government to uphold it uh yeah i know that's yeah. exactly what it feels like right like 
I don't want to side with gigantic corporation, but patent trolling is not good. You shouldn't do it. <laughs> I don't know why I had to choose between the two, but here we are. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> this I, is, all right. This is, <laughs> I guess if we have to pick a side, um, I already have to pick the lesser of two evils in other things. I don't want to have to do it in my toys. Okay. <laughs> Although really <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, if I walk into a store and I see the ship from the Mandalorian, you're not reading them and it's called, it's, it's called star Wars, the ship from the Mandalorian. I'm just going to buy it. <laughs> like, I don't care who cares like... that, it, that they've, that they've locked down the name razor crest. I yeah. don't care. I feel like it's a, a collector's item. Cause in five years it'll say razor crest on it. So if you get it now, yeah. save it. Right. And it'll be that funny yeah. moment when they couldn't call it the Razor Crest, so you'll get five hundred dollars more for it in five years. So, so that only applies to Europe, right? Yeah, I so have like a Razor Crest. There's a box version in the U.S. where it says Razor right. Crest, and then there's a box version in Europe that says yeah, whatever I can else. Go, I can go look. It's at the front. So then that's that works out better for Lego because then all the people in the U.S. buy two. Oh, because you got to get one from Europe. Yeah, you want to get both boxes because of crazy American collectors. Yeah, or you're going to get three. You're going to get one to open and build. You're going to get one for the American <laughs> box to keep in the box, and one for the <laughs> European box to keep in the box. This is like the perfect this thing. Lego probably set this up. This they probably Lego worked Christmas. on it with the fake people. <laughs> <laughs> Lego just started calling random companies. They're like, "Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, the Razor Crest, it, it laps. We let it lapse. You should like go grab it right now." <laughs> before lucasfilm notices go grab it <laughs> what's what's I easier look, than than making one package make two <laughs> i just looked at my razor crest my my order for that is is canceled for some reason whoa what yeah i have to look into this i oh. i'll i'm if customer service is open tomorrow i'll be contacting them i have a box at the front door order it through? i go yeah, because I wanted the points because it was like double X, double XP, and I got a one of like Le, uh, you get a Harry Potter figure. No, no, I mean I I ordered it back when it went up in oh. like, so it's like I have one of these type of like little vignette sets where it was like I think this the Endor yep. no it wasn't Battle for Endor no it was the trench run. Oh, it was the trench run one. That's cool. Yeah, it was a trench run mini set and then double XP. So I'm like I I wanted double. That sounded good. So I ordered it back then and I look at it now and it's canceled. So I'm like okay. I need to go back and be like, hi, Lego. Can yeah. what happened? I got to go look. There's a Lego box at my front door that is the size of the right amount of things that I just ordered. So we'll see. I think that was a good. I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I thinking back on on your question about what you should collect, though. Yeah, I think that you should look look into your heart and what size is your dash Rendar figure? This uh, vintage. Yeah, three, three so that's quarters. the scale you should go with because you've already, that's the size of your dash I render. Two. I have an open one and a not open one. And I have an open <laughs> outrider and a not open outrider. <laughs> and do you have the outrider in both green and purple? I have the I have both boxes. They made a green outrider? They made a, a green, green box? Green box outrider green. and a purple box outrider. I did outrider. not know that. Yeah. I have the green box outrider closed still because the box is perfect. And the purple box outrider that I got was destroyed. The box was like crushed in shipping. So I opened that one and uh, I'll have to find another purple box one later. I don't think any of that shadow stuff is worth. I mean, unless it's like some no. weird, rare, short saber, long tray variant. I don't I don't think any of that stuff. One or two of them are hard to much. find, but they're not expensive if yeah. you find them. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that's been my experience with they the shadow also, stuff. A lot too. of them look terrible, so. Oh yeah, no. The, you're talking about like the sculpts, the Luke yeah. Skywalker sculpt that's like his shoulders are this big from shadows. Yeah. Oh, Chewbacca what is that? Is that a vi vintage size Rex? Yeah, this is from Star Tours. So back when I was talking about it, during like when you leave Star Tours, the old one in Star Trader, they would have action figures that were exclusive to the park. And so, but also if you notice, his colors are the original yes. Rex's colors. He only has two arms, not three. I think I'm now a vintage. Is there vintage stuff from Cal Kestis? Oh, um, I don't think so. I think he's only been six inch so far. Dang. That's the guy from the video game. Yeah, the, Cal Kestis. Oh, he's new one, right? Yeah. Game. Right. Yeah. I I don't think there was a, a Cal Kestis, and I don't. And there there I remember there was a Zane Carrick in pre-production but i don't think it got i don't got think it got produced oh he didn't make and it the, 
There, yeah, and it doesn't look like there's a vintage collection Cal Kestis. Is there a it Black not... Series Zane Carrick? No, not yet. The, and the, also, too, when in, we, and for the, when you're searching for stuff, if you put in Black Series, remember that for a short period, the Black Series was the name for both the three and three quarter scale and the six inch. So you can find, like, I have a Black Series um, Sith, uh, Secret Apprentice, which is Galen Merrick, the the one from Force Unleashed, but right. he's on, he's a three and three quarter on a Black Series card. So, Ken, why won't you call him Starkiller? Uh, because I, because well, because now it's it's a bit of like an it's SEO problems of like oh Star Killer you mean the giant base that got blown up or right you know, but he was the original Star Killer he should have been we, the only Star Killer uh, but the original we need to Star stop Killer. talking about the base <laughs> okay <laughs> the base the base was named after him <laughs> it's ding, an honorary ding 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 honorary Star Killer base yeah it was an honorific they remember yeah. the idea of Star Killer. Like, remember when he worked for us and we didn't know about it? Yeah. It was great. Well, thanks for joining us for another carbon scoring. Uh, I'm going to look into my heart, and if I can find enough vintage series figures like this Rex, maybe I'll sculpt my own Cal Kestis and we'll be good to go. There there are a lot. You can probably find all the figures you're looking for all in right. three and three quarter inch. Sweet. We'll we'll revisit shortly. I'm gonna take Outside another, of Cal Kestis. I'm gonna take another month. I'm going to absorb how much I love the Legos I got. Look at all my action figures and we will revisit when we come back to carbon scoring. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, constructive criticisms, podcast, we were gamers.com. I'll be better about putting all these photos up that we talked about on Instagram. It's been a crazy month and a half of fires and other things. So we'll do that. And we're on Twitter, etc. cetera. And uh, until next time, Keldroma for life. May the force be with you. <laughs> oh, that's that. That's the right way. <laughs> and also with you. And with your spirit. I mean, we're not Church of England. I don't know what 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 lands in what. <laughs> <laughs> I think no. The, the only place that Jedi is a recognized religion is in England. Fair enough. People too, like, oh, it's such a dumb ride. I'm like, no, but it's it's, it's more Star ride. Wars. It's the you only ride, ride I've ever. Ride. What? It's a great ride. Yeah, what? yeah. Who it's the that? only ride I've ever convinced a kid on that we Star actually, Trek fans like went to space. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, uh, Gators. You know, the Stargate people. The... Oh, <laughs> is it, are those? Is that actually a thing? Are they like Gators? I guess they probably are, right? Like yeah. from yeah. the shows and stuff. I love Stargate. Is that what they call themselves? Do they actually call themselves Gators? I don't know if they call themselves Gators, but they have their own like TV network just for Stargate. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's free on the internet. Yep. Or <laughs> on my, on, I don't know, on the internet, but on my, on my um, smart TV. Everything's mm-hmm. free on the internet. No, but I mean, like my 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 uh, smart oh, TV crazy. came with a app that has some channels and one of them is like stargate all the time or yeah they have the little yeah. repaired dude yeah the little the guy GT who's 19? like also the the patrick warburton bot too yeah. they also have him <laughs> oh i'm gonna have to get half of these yeah it's definitely not, definitely not like i don't need everyone here definitely but i do not. enjoy <laughs> the repair some droids of them and i'm sure. like yeah because they're still there that's cool oh wow i didn't even see this one I don't even remember seeing these guys. Are they on the outside of the ride? Like physically um, outside as you're waiting in line or are they oh, on the yeah, screen? Yeah, they're in the line. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, some of them are, are, are like in the, cause it's like you'll, when you first come in, you see like R2 and 3PO when they were just outside, just like setting up the thing. And then you'll come around and there, there's some bots that are just kind of decommissioned on the side. And now there's Patrick Warburton bot. Who's like, it's like, okay, move along, move along. And there's a bot who's checking baggage. And like those are two of them that you see in the 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 second to last image, the the last image is in is on the right itself because you're leaving a spaceport and there's like oh hey don't go this way and like there's one that's like just got like traffic cones to tell you go to this way, that one's a newer one actually, hmm. 2013 oh I guess that's when they launched the new yeah that's when wow they did has the it really been redo. seven years that was wow, the redo it's... before the new series is, oh. is started coming out that was when they revamped the ride a little bit.
and when we lost Captain Rex. Anyway, do either of you care about the imp- the Black Series Imperial uh, Imperial probe droid? No. No. Okay. Although it looks cool, like I mean, it looks I mean, it like looks a great. really nice yeah. figure. Yeah. Okay, because it's right now, and it's it's the six inch scale, so it's big. It's like it's, it's big, yay yeah. big of the yeah. box. It's fifteen dollars at the Target by me. It's half <laughs> off, and I'm like, I almost got one, but I'm like, I'm not a big Empire guy, but like for fifteen bucks, that's a great droid. It's yeah. cool. actually now that I now that I say that, I'm now thinking because I I want to do a little droid droid like depot in my like in on the shelf because i built all those model kit ones but like now i want to get that one just to put it there too yeah. for 15 bucks yes all right I think yeah it's got to run yeah i we can always talk more about this stuff so next time yeah yeah i i don't get why i would want this rebel transport but i haven't been on the ride which rebel transport the its resistance transfer. oh yeah if you haven't been on the ride i don't see as much interest but if you have it is it's a very fun ride and it's very enjoyable so i i all from one ride i have an attachment to it i enjoy it because it's still the magic kind of coming back to going to star war or star to sorry to galaxy's edge and being on a new ride was very kind of like it i'm like oh this is really fun yeah and the well, Falcon, the Falcon ride was was not it was great. 